Okay, so welcome back to another Bitwig uh, device tutorial. And in this one, we need to talk about the ricochet, or at least, you know, this is at least how Google Translate is telling me how this is pronounced. So, ricochet. Yeah, that's it. So, okay, so that's fine. So, uh, this is a new device that we get with the 4.1, and it's kind of a weird. It's just a little bit weird, but it could be really, really useful. So, first, I'm going to show you what I have right here. I have a tiny, tiny clip just playing something very simple. Right? Just something very simple. Just playing one, two, three, and four. Right. And I'm sustaining the notes, of course, in this case. So when I uh, turn this on and I play this, it's going to recognize that note. And every time that we play the note, it's going to launch the ball from the center of the room. And then, of course, depending on the walls and the, you know, and all these controls, it's going to bounce off the walls pretty simple and we get that sound now behind the scenes what it's doing is kind of a repeating that note and messing with the uh, velocity and I can prove this I'm gonna go and stop it and right here this is recording whatever that comes out of the ricochet and I'm gonna go and play it and it is that we get a single note so it's not changing pitch of course so if I go and inspect this what we get is the same note being repeated several times, several times, and then of course it goes down in kind of a velocity, and it's cool, right? It's just a very unique kind of a kind of a thing. So I'm gonna go here, and you can modify how this sounds. The first control is gonna be uh, the size of the room, and, and and of course you see all of these controls, and and it looks very confusing, but it's a very simple device, so don't don't fear the device. So this one is gonna be how many walls you get. Or how many, you know, if it goes to a kind of a basic shape. And of course, since the room is changing, how the ball bounce, it bounces, the bounces is going to be a little bit different. It's going to just kind of bounce on a different way. Right, so that's it. So of course, maybe you want, you know, right now, notice that this one, it's bouncing right here and it's always the same. Because we are playing one on each bar, so it's always the same. So if I go and rotate, this is just going to be a little bit different. That's why you get the rotate. Right, so very simple. I'm going to go back to default. So then you have the uh, you have the room and this one, what it does, it will kind of a mess and I'm going to go all the way down. This one is going to mess with the panning and it's going to mess with the uh, it's going to mess with the, uh, the the timber. So if I go all the way up, Maybe you're gonna need to use headphones on this one. Notice that the ball, if it's bouncing on the right side, you're gonna get it on the right speaker and then on the left, on the left speaker. And at the same time, this is kind of a outputting uh, timber, uh, kind of a values. And I can prove this. If I go to the expressions, I add the expressions modulator and I go and do something like that. Notice that this one, it's kind of a moving based on whatever the ball is doing. So yeah, it's uh, th this one out, uh, uh, kind of uh, divides this on right side and left side, and they will give you the timber. All right. So again, that's what that's what it does. So you can use it as a modulation if you wish. So okay, so I'm gonna go and turn it off. So okay, I'm gonna go and play it again, and this one is gonna be the damping. So, uh, if I go all the way up, notice what it does. So it's gonna bounce, it's gonna, of course, throw the ball, it's gonna go right here, and then it's just not gonna move, or we're not gonna bounce. And if I go to something that makes sense, because this one makes no sense, but if I go right here, notice that it's kind of uh, making the ball really heavy. And if I go all the way down, this is like one of those rubber balls that you throw and it starts bouncing all over the house. Well. Yeah, you get a lot, lot more bounces. It's a kind of a light, it's like the density of the ball. It's really dense, really heavy, very, you know, light. So the other one is going to be the radius. Of course, if the ball is really small, you're going to start, you know, getting a different sound because it will just bounce differently. Or you can make a really big ball and the bounce, of course, is going to get, is going to change. So all this is, you know, pretty simple controls. And then you get the ball speed. Of course, if I go all the way down, it's going to be super slow. Kind of an unusable sound. So if I go a little bit faster, you get that. And if I go super fast, it's just going to be ridiculous. But this could be useful. 
it's, it's just a very simple device, just a very simple thing to use, very simple to understand. So then, of course, notice that always, always, always the ball is getting launched uh, from the center of the of the room. Always. And notice that the room is kind of a rotating. And this is because, of course, if we play different clips or maybe different notes on different places, it's just going to launch the ball. In this case, it's always coming out of the middle and going up. Notice that this is always the first. And it's because I'm playing one, two, three, four, and I'm playing at the beginning of the, of the bar. So this is kind of a perfect, because this one goes to 360 and it lasts one bar. That's why we have the bar right here. So this, of course, this rotation will last one bar, so it's always the same bounce. Now, if I bring other elements or play something else, maybe, maybe right here, maybe I'm gonna go right here. Now, notice that we can output or, you know, we can hear more balls because we get more sounds. And since this one is a 50%, this one is gonna get launched right here. Not here and up, it's gonna be here and down. Now, of course, you can do whatever you want right here. It just doesn't matter. You're just gonna get chaos. But of course, the, the balls, they will, they will be launched from different places, so they will bounce on different spots. If not, everything is gonna just be launched and bounce on the same place. Let me just go to something more, you know, useful for now. I'm gonna go back. Okay, so then you have the odd thing, which is gonna be the randomize. This is gonna kind of, uh, you know, remove the, uh, the starting point, and it will just do a random launch. Sometimes it's gonna go there, sometimes it's gonna go to a different place, but it's just random. All right, so that's the difference. And then you have the other one, which is uh, kind of a, not the random, it's gonna be the manual. And notice that right now, this pointer is down, but it's not moving, so this means it will always launch from here. It doesn't matter where you're at, or what, what, from, uh, whatever you're playing. It's always the same position, but you can rotate this, and you can decide where to go. Notice right now I'm here, I'm launching the ball from here, and you can do a automation with this. If you want to use a modulator and do a nice automation, you can. But that's it, that's, all. that's pretty much all the controls. All right, so again, it's just a very simple, very, very simple device. So you get one more thing I didn't tell you, it is gonna be this option. You don't have this option right here, but whenever you select the device, you have something that says sound on initial notes. How confusing, right? So, okay, so I'm gonna go and play it again. We have one single note. And every time this sound goes out, we can hear the first note, the initial note. Let's just call it the, call it the fundamental. The fundamental note, we can hear it when it goes out, and then we can hear all the bouncing. Now I'm gonna go and, oops, I'm gonna go and do the same, let's just close this, and I'm gonna turn this off. And now we're gonna hear something different. We don't hear the fundamental, but we only hear the bounces. And if I record this and go back and record it, it's gonna be translated here. So if I go there and just show you, because I'm curious, I'm gonna, I'm gonna show you that the initial uh, note, it's not there. And this could be useful because maybe you can kind of uh, create different sounds and you just want the bouncing and you don't want the initial note. The initial note is gonna be much higher in volume and all the other ones, all the bounces are just gonna be down in volume. So you can create kind of an atmosphere. And, uh, and so, yeah, this is a very kind of a useful uh, option. It's a very useful option. And I can actually prove this. I have something ready for you. And again, this is the uh, kind of a the whole thing, uh, the, the whole thing that this plugin does. This is what it does in essence. But maybe you can use it on a more creative way. I'm going to go right here and I have a nice polysynth and I have a nice delay right here and a nice reverb. They're all very friendly. And right now I have a ricochet, but now notice that this is an instrument layer. So I'm playing kind of a this uh, kind of a clip, which is four notes, sustaining four notes, a chord, and then just adding one note and then adding one note, right? So I'm gonna go and mute the second one. And the first one is just a polysynth, right? The first one is just a synth. So if I play this, it's gonna be kind of a, let's say pad. It's just a pad sound. Get the note. That's what it does. Now, of course, it sounds cool, sounds like a pad, but it sounds a little bit dull. 
Now, what you can do, since this instrument layer is recognizing all the incoming MIDI notes, you just can go to the, the second layer and you can add a different polysynth. And I'm gonna go and turn off the ricochet. If I turn... Now we are getting the same thing, but of course this is a different synth with a different sound. It has much more, uh, you know, higher frequencies. We are doing a delay and a reverb. But we keep the initial sound, and then we are just com com doing a complement with the uh, other sound. So, what happens if we uh, bring the ricochet? Because if you think about this, you're just uh, stacking two different uh, synth, uh, two different pads. But maybe on this one, I'm gonna go and turn the ricochet on, and this one is gonna create chaos. Really cool, man. Really, really cool. Now, what happens if I go to the ricochet right here and I say, you know what? I don't want the initial notes because the initial notes are going to be played by this one. I want you to play this in the background. So if I play both, let me just go right here. We have a kind of an atmospheric sound with something very unique at the, at the background. And of course, we can control the volumes because if you think about it, this is the, this is the main instrument. This one is just an effect that goes at the back, and just like that, this is stupid synth. It's just you know, it has a very interesting sound. So again, all this bit with devices are just for experimentation and randomization, and just to, you know to mess around with them and just get very interesting sounds. That's why you get this ricochet. It's not something you know like a compressor or something that we will use the whole time. This is uh, a creative device. Okay, so that's it. Now, one more thing, of course, you can use this in a creative way, uh, of course. And uh, this is a device for creativity. That's it, right? So, but you can also remember, use it for panning because you get the panning and you can use it for the pressure, you know, with the expressions, the thing that we uh, kind of uh, did later with the timber. Uh, so if you can even use the timbre to maybe not use a synth, but maybe control a motion uh, of, a, of a delay. Why not? You can do that. In this case, I'm not using it, but you know, we could. And uh, I'm using an ADSR to increment the sound or the mix whenever, you know, the note plays. Just so we can get a much more atmospheric sound. That's it. But again, this is just kind of a device that you will need to grab and to do a little bit of experimentation. That's why we get this device. So, okay, so hopefully you learned something. Uh, you like this video, of course. Uh, you, of course, remember to like and subscribe. And remember to check Patreon because everything I do right here, I upload uh, to Patreon first. All right. Okay. So, see you on the next one.